Hello everyone, welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Apologies for the delay in episodes. That was because I was trying to cook up a Mars lander to send to the Joplin, our ship, in orbit around Earth so that it could carry it to Mars eventually. Uh, obviously, we will still do that. But I was trying to base it off of the Lynx spacecraft and you might have seen the video with the heat shield landing leg design that I came up with. And I'm not entirely sold on that. There were comments making suggestions about how it could work out. And part of it is I think our landing location was so high. If we were landing in Valles Marineris at lower altitude and thicker atmosphere, that would probably work out a little bit better. But yeah, I think we're going to go with a mini Q based design. And so I'll have to actually make that in Blender because I have adjustments to make on the mini Q but that might be our lander. So I'm setting aside the sending up the lander portion for later, and we'll be sending up more tanks and more fuel eventually, but I want to do our launches in daylight, uh, and that really depends on time of year because of the way the orbits are. So uh, we are going to handle some maneuvers with our previous interplanetary missions first, and then that should get us enough time warping so that we're launching in daylight to resupply the St. Louis add tanks to Joplin as well as the Flagstaff. So without further ado, we're going to do this uh, quick maneuver with this Jupiter probe. This is obviously a resource scanner and probably will end up in, at uh, Ganymede since the other one is the Callisto one. So yeah, well, let's just do this as accurately as possible. This is completely hypergolic and storable, so there's no boil off concerns. Okay, okay, that should be good enough. Let's see. That seems very inclined compared to what I wanted. All right, that's better. But it's another two years and 288 days, which means we'll probably be launching our Mars stuff and then also getting ready for another Mars sortie before this actually arrives. Uh, okay, that might be a good start right there. So I'll add the SOI change alarm. And we'll pay attention to it then. So next up, the Callisto probe. Okay, same idea, different probe. This one, the Callisto probe. And hopefully it will do better than the previous one where I had to do some extra adjustment. Okay, go. Okay, well, within point one, let's see. I've already got another thing pl plotted here, but... Chances are that needs to be fixed. Um, atmosphere of Jupiter is fairly low, 1,550 kilometers, so we're safe. It's pretty good. Let's see. Okay, well, these two maneuvers will basically take the current stage, and then the next stage, we don't know. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it'll still have some delta V. I don't know if it's going to let me see or if something's happened to it. Why it's not showing delta V. That's always suspicious and makes me worried. It's got fuel in. This does not have cross feed enabled. So we'll hope. Um, yeah, you'll have to hope. All right. So anyway, we have an SOI change alarm. Oh, uh, it put the maneuver, didn't it? I want the SOI change first. Okay, so this is all set, and it'll be arriving on the same day as the other one. So that's convenient, I guess. All right. Let's see if it's a good time to launch something to the St. Louis. Okay, looks good for a daytime launch here. We have the Cassay rocket with an NTP tank. This is actually one of the drop tanks. So it's got a tank and a frame that are separate and we are going to launch it to the St. Louis which currently doesn't have this kind of tank but we'll sneak it in there because I think I want to change the ones that we have there out or we'll compare their positives and negatives. We have two of the old type tank on the St. Louis right now and we'll just add this as a third. So we are uh, lined up well enough and we will see how it goes. The whole transfer is due to be done by the Cassay's upper stage, which may or may not be a good idea. We'll find out. So, with that, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. 
and launch. This does not have to try to go to the Bahamas, of course, so we'll launch directly into the target's inclination. Okay, getting above the clouds here. The payload is 40 tons. The low Earth orbit capacity of this without any boosters is 105. But we are going into a high orbit here. All right, separation and ignition and fairings. Okay, there we go. One of the drop tank style NTP tanks. Okay, and that's orbit 217 by 156. And our relative inclination is 0.22. We've got 2,449 meters per second left. And that should be good enough. We will see. Uh, so, yep. Uh, the, our periapsis is pretty close to the periapsis side there, but we should boost that up and then wait. So, probably around here-ish. We'll correct a tiny bit of inclination that we have remaining there. Looking at it though, we might benefit from boosting up immediately a bit. Yeah, okay, so if we do this burn like immediately right now, um, burning up 867, then we can do maneuver and get a close encounter over there. So let's burn please. Well, 203 and then let's just call it a thousand and we do have enough to match speeds so everything is good as far as that's concerned. So we do have limited power. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have a fuel cell on here. This wasn't that. It has a radiator but I forgot the solar panel. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okay. Hit a minimum at 2.8 kilometers there. We're even meeting it in daylight over here. But the electric charge is a little bit tight, so we need to do things quickly. Okay, well... We've got a nice approach there, but we'll need to do one more ignition in order to kill off about 44.5 meters per second, and we have six ignitions remaining, so that's all right, but it's just the quickness of the next ignition that's got to be a little bit troublesome. Okay, RCS will have to do the rest, but really, um, we will separate everything off now. Uh, what kind of power do we have here? It's, it's got all the electric charge. I want to deorbit this so if I could get a little bit of electric charge in there. Uh, you know what? It might not be worthwhile. We'll see. Because I think it'll be too much to try to deorbit it. Let's find out. 940, probably not. We would have to wait until apoapsis, at which point the battery will be dead. Well, let's try and get it out of the way anyway. Alright. But we're going to have to pull the St. Louis apart to get this in. Well, for some reason, the orange of the tanks that we have there isn't quite as vibrant as the orange that we have here. Maybe they're just sort of worn after their trip to Mars. After all, this is the ship that actually went to Mars and came back. So maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously not, but, uh, you, you know, we can imagine. 
Okay, that'll be fine for now. Let's see, where do we want this? Well, I think we'll put it closer to the front. So we'll put it right here. And that docking port, undock. Okay. And we'll have the propulsion section back off. Okay, just mildly drifting away there. Right, now this has to sort of sneak in. Okay, heading in and hoping everything works right. There are some subtleties here. Of course, the ship came from 1.8.1 and hasn't been disassembled in this version. And also, this is technically a slightly different docking port than that one. They should be the same in terms of connectivity, but they're actually a different part. Hopefully, we won't have too much boil off here, but it does have some boil off here. Not much, though. We put 100 MLI layers and everything. We haven't extended the radiator, but whether radiators work or not, I have no idea. As far as boil off is concerned, I mean. Hey. All right, they've docked, so no problem with the parts and the engine check section. Yeah. It was not my intention for the tanks to be a different orange. <laughs> this is a little bit disconcerting. This is a somewhat larger tank, by the way. Okay, all connected up again. So the St. Louis is all right. It has some Delta V. We'll see if it can keep the Delta V. That's a whole other story. But no problems here. And we can extend the radiator here. We decided to carry up. All right, same size as those, of course, but only one of them. I don't know how effective they are at reducing boil off. Well, it seems to not have any boil off loss here, so I guess that's good, considering it's a full tank, right? We will see. All right, so that's all right for now. Uh, let's try and launch one to one of our other ships. Rather than launching another tank, it turns out what we really need is a nuclear ion drive unit like we have on the other ships sent to the Flagstaff. This Flagstaff does not currently have nuclear engines or ion engines, and we are going to send one of those units to it. So same basic unit, and we're actually using the old methane stage to get it there. And let's see how it goes. So throttle up, SAS on, and well, we can aim camera. And we're all lined up. Ignition. And launch. Okay, shut down and roll. On this configuration, it can definitely get to 4,000 meters per second. And there we go. Separation. Okay, control from here. Oh, we don't have those on an action group. All right. Well, they separate anyway. Okay. Okay, inclination looks good. We are going down a bit though. Let's uh, try and get that resolved here. Okay, last little bit here, but I don't think the stage is going to help us out as far as rendezvous is concerned. Okay, 235 by 150. And yeah, we're just going to activate the stage, not the parachutes. And, well, this should decouple that. Ooh. All right, now uh, this guy can back off. Oh, uh, uh, kill rotation, don't do anything else. Okay. And now uh, this can flip retrograde. And 
that's done. All right. Now this has to get to the flagstaff. Fortunately, it has two nuclear engines. <laughs> it's always helpful. Not a huge amount of Delta V, but plenty for uh, Earth Orbit Rendezvous. Uh-oh, uh, we've got some overheating of something. What? Why would the ion engines overheat? Well, we do have a huge radiator. Extend sun shield, activate radiator. I don't know. <laughs> this is the first I've seen. That is the ion engines, yeah. Hmm. I mean, to be sure, there's nuclear reactors on board. It's hot. But hopefully all our hydrogen doesn't boil off too quickly. It doesn't seem like it's boiling off. I mean, we've got some heat penetration here. More than I'd like. But still, I don't know why the ion engines are overheating. We might want to get into a lower orbit. Okay, we have a tangency over there, and we're going to go ahead and rendezvous over here eventually. How's the boil off doing? Well, now it says no boil off loss, so that's good. All right, there it is, six kilometers away. And we're closing to a fin render range. Oh, wanton abuse of nuclear engines. I should check how many ignitions the St. Louis engines have because you know, I only put 60 ignitions on these engines. So it might be tight over there. Can we get Kerbals to replace nuclear engines? Or should we just replace the entire module and send the old module if it's the last ignition into interplanetary space or something? Oh shoot, nighttime warped accidentally too much. But we're in daylight. I guess that's a plus. Uh now we actually need to sort of make the whole ship longer. But it's nice to have a propulsion section on before we start that. I was thinking of doing a different kind of propulsion system though. But we'll be adding that in into the middle. We would still need the nuclear engines on one end. So, so potentially we could have left off the ion engines in this case. Then again, they actually help to counterbalance the crew pod, so... It's not exactly a problem. Something else would have to counterbalance the crew pod. Okay, closing into dock here. Trying to sneak it in while we still have light. Okay, there we go. So we have that much assembled and now there is actual Delta V on here though not as much as I was expecting. We have uh, crossfeed enabled on the docking ports. Well maybe it's just where we're controlling from. Ah, enable crossfeed. Nope, that didn't help the Delta V reading down there. Well there must be something. Hmm. Okay, well, some part is not properly feeding such that we're not getting the Delta V reading. That 2,206, uh, sorry, 2,226 is the ion engine. So these tanks aren't getting fed into our nuclear system. And I'll have to figure out why. But for now, it's all together and the sun is setting on us, so we should wrap it up. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.